monkeys And people say we monkey around But we're too busy singing To put anybody down Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Bump Monkey Mafia. I'm Frankie V, here with my broadcasting partner. See, rather good guy. And we're here with RWE superstar Christian Temple. Guys, how's it going today? It's Glad to be here. Good, Thank man. you so much for having me on. It's going, man. We've been trying, trying to get to you on for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember hearing you guys uh, mention me over on, I think it was episode six, uh, wow, about, about, a, about a month and a half ago. <laughs> you guys saw me, I think you saw me for, live for the first time down in uh, Mid-South and all that, too. Yeah, and, uh, four -way, I yeah. Think. CJ Ward. Yeah, yeah. CJ Ward, Prince, Prince Mahali, and uh, Jim yeah. Yeah, oh, Xavier. 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 I, I did I, uh, the month beforehand. I do remember I did work with Jim and I, and that okay. was a that was a five man match. I've been, okay. I've, been I've been counting down in, yeah. in mid south. Five I started four three. Five four. Well, actually, it was twenty two because I was in oh, that. Oh, uh, Rumble. Oh, I forget. What, it was some kind of Invitational Battle Royal. I was part of okay. that too. Well, and then five four Jones three. Invitation? Was it the Tom Jones Invitational? It might have been. It okay. might have been. I don't remember the, the name off the top of my head. I just Drake got me a spot on the card, and I was like, yeah, like, yeah I'm Sweet. more than happy. To well, we always enjoy having you down there. There. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, with the first time we saw you wrestle, we were just blown away. I mean, all the <laughs> flips you. and all the whistles, oh, and man. all the good stuff. It's, you know, it's it's like we were talking to C.J. Ward about two months ago. It's like the new breed of wrestlers are, are here. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, they're actually entertaining to watch. Now. Absolutely, yeah. I love it, man. It was just flat out entertainment. Yeah. Put on a good show. We love it. And fans it, love it exactly. And I know what, what's what's great about the, the region of where we're wrestling at as well too is that you know it's it's more of an old school based style. I mean the, the style that you see from some of these promotions like here in the Midwest, it's so different than if you were to go you know to the East Coast, if you were to go to uh, down to Mexico, if you were to go to the West Coast and all that too. And that's just it's just one of those things where you know I'm not a I'm not a you know, six foot three, three hundred yeah. pound guy. You know, I'm, and I've got to, you know, I've got to get the crowd involved in it somehow, some way. And yeah, I figured uh, any any high flying that I can do, and I think a lot of, a lot of guys in this area kind of have the same mentality. So that's that's just the way I like to do so things. How long so. have you been? How long have you been in the business, brother? I started training in uh, November fifth, uh, two thousand twelve. Uh, uh, school cool. school opened up in uh, Wichita, Kansas, run by a gentleman named Lance the Mangler Chafin, who okay. actually he went down to Florida to uh, Brian Knobs' uh, pro okay. wrestling school down yeah. in Florida, down I think in Clearwater, Florida, I want to say. And uh, it was great because he, you know, being Brian Knobs, you know, he's best friend of Hulk yeah. Hogan and Ric Flair and all that too. So he got to be around Man. all those guys like at least on a weekly basis. So he was very, very he learned a lot down there too. And then uh, it came to came to pass in. Uh, of September earlier, earlier in 2012, uh, that's when I met uh, the Natester, Nathan McClanahan, and all that too. I met all those guys, and uh, he contacted me one day and said, "Hey, Brian Knobs is uh, going to have a three-day training seminar up in uh, up in Salina, and uh, I, it costs uh, three hundred dollars, or yeah, three hundred dollars for three days to do it as well too. So it was uh, me, my my friend Chase, my friend uh, Ian. We all got in the car and we stayed in a hotel up here in Salina, and we did the three-day seminar, and uh, that's where I met." Uh, uh, Lance for the first time, and uh, about a month later, after this, after the seminar, he gave me a call and said, "Hey, I'm going to be opening up a, a wrestling school over in, over in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, it's going to cost uh, three hundred dollars a month. Uh, you're more than welcome to come by and try, and try out and uh, see if you can do it." So, the, the, November fifth was the first day of training, and uh, here, here we are today. It's been, it's been a great awesome. journey so far. Awesome. So what? Yeah. Like when you went to train, what was the first thing they had you do? Cardio, cardio, cardio. Car seriously, <laughs> seriously. There was, there wasn't, a, there wasn't a ring in the building for nearly a month and a half it was Holy all straight God. cardio drills we learned the, the basic holds out. yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we learned uh you know basic holds you know like how to lock up and how yeah, to do yeah. basic chain wrestling all that too and we all did that just on the concrete on of, of this uh oh, yeah. what used to be it used to be like a body shop kind of a building sort of thing and then we built we basically built our own ring for, for the most part, but uh, huh. but yeah, once we got the ring in, then yeah, we learned uh, we so learned ring awareness. Like, yeah, it's it was much different than what I hear a lot of people you yeah. know, went through as well. Then when I first so, yeah. my first encounter, walk in, you pay your tryout fee, and then I got body slammed like five times. <laughs> no, no there was, this was definitely <laughs> uh, this was definitely a, mu a much better promotion. He, he took he took excellent care of us, but at the same time, you know, he made sure we knew what yeah. we were doing and what we were doing was the right way to do things, which I I'm forever grateful for on that too. It, of course, a lot of too, man. Yeah. When I was in, it was psychology based. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Like the moves kind of came. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, in the course of training. Absolutely, yeah. And that, that was another thing, too, is that we, we would take each move, you know, break it down, do it one at a time, and then what we would do is uh, we'd run, like, three-minute spot matches, you know, where oh, we, yeah, we'd, yeah. Uh, we'd do a lock-up, you know, do a couple chain moves, and then 
it'd be the same time off the ropes. You whip someone off, arm drag, hip toss, body slam, pin. And you just did it over and over, over and, and over. over and over again until you, until it was basically muscle memory at that point. So, yes. so. I'm on name <laughs> drop right here. Uh, yeah, yeah. We did a training match. We went 25 minutes with uh, Ryan Davidson. What is he, R-W, R-O-W? He's R-O-W. 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 Yeah, down okay. in Houston, Texas. Yeah. Shout out to my brother, Ryan Davidson. <laughs> Uh, I was so tired after that, like mm. I couldn't even breathe. It's, it was crazy, and, and that's that's the that's the unknown uh, factor that goes with uh, professional wrestling is that yes. you can be you can be the biggest, baddest, muscled up guy and all that too. Thing about it is, if you don't have your wind in that ring, it can come back to haunt you, and it, it comes back quickly. So, yeah, Who was Cody threw up a lot. Yeah, I, did <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I don't blame you. There's, there's been a time when all of us, all the stu- original students, we all had a time where we, we broke down and just, you know, it, it, it just got tough. I always tough. had a so, problem yeah. of eating before I trained. Oh, man, that was so, always the toughest. So, like, I'd go kill some, you know, burritos from Taco Bell and then <laughs> ball game. Yeah, not, not necessarily the, the meal of champions before going out and working no. out that way, too. But, uh, but anyway, sorry I interrupted you there. You said, uh, Who was your first match against? My, my first match was against my, my buddy my buddy Chase, who I'm actually I'm working tonight, Chris Vale. Okay. It was, okay. it, was, it was down in... Uh, in uh, uh, Lincoln, Arkansas, for Arkansas Pro Wrestling back in the so day. So you all train yeah. together as well. We all train together, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. See, that's what you can appreciate, man. You grow up together, you train together. Did you put on some of the best matches with those people? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's awesome, you know, training and getting to know all the guys as well, too. As you know, they, they basically become your second family, and that's, yeah. and that's what's great about it, you know. You, you suffer together, you train together, you have your matches together, and you go through all that, and it's, it, it's magical what, what you've accomplished with it as well, too. So, yeah. like, in, in the business alone, you seem like you've came so far in such a short period of time. I, I'd say I'm, I've been blessed with, with the opportunities I've been given so far. I mean, I'd say 2013, 2014, I didn't really get to do a whole lot because one, one, of, the, one of the stipulations with being with my, with my trainer is that we could only go where, wherever he was going. We, we weren't necessarily ready to, to branch out on our own yet. And it, wasn't until, it really wasn't until about mid to late 2015 that I really started trying to you know, expand and try to go other places too. Like uh, I started, I, of course, I started here with RWE. I went to uh, WWX for, for a few of those shows too. And then early 2016, that's when I started started reaching out to other states so I got a hold of uh, uh, Mike Steerwalt Canadian Red Devil who runs a yeah. uh, uh, com- compound Come pro on, wrestling oh yeah. and uh, I asked him I was like hey I'm just trying to get my name out is there do you have anything that you can do for me for your one of your upcoming shows and he said yes I w- I'd find a spot for you if you get your license which <laughs> that yeah. was that was a I, I messaged him a week before his next show and it was I was a rush to go get my blood work done yeah, and all that too. And I actually, I went into the building the day of the show to get my paperwork before I went down to Tulsa. And they said, your paperwork's not ready yet. And I'm just like, oh, oh God. <laughs> so here I am. I'm, walk, I'm, I'm walking out the door, getting ready to leave. And then, Josh? I was like, yeah? And turn around, <laughs> look behind me. He's like, your papers are here. And I was like, holy smokes, <laughs> saved by the bell. And yeah, I, I get down there, and I had my very first match with uh, Spanish fly Nathan Estrada. Who was Nathan Estrada. Yeah, yeah. Estrada. He's a really, really cool guy to be around. He's he always he's, he's always happy. so happy. He's always so happy. Yeah. Always so happy. And he was very he was I've seen him play a heel and he's still happy. Yeah. <laughs> well see he plays a hill at compound. Yeah. And, and like yeah. I see it and like I think he's in a group right now, a faction with CRD. I believe it. Yeah, he's with uh, Pierce Inc. I believe. Yeah, it Pierce. Is. Inc. I, I still follow them all that too. Because the, what, what I like to do when I go to promotions, I like to follow their storylines too. So if they need someone, you know, step in and. Uh, up. Step step up a storyline. At least I'm caught up on everything too. So uh, have you yeah. got a chance to see Skylar Slice wrestle? I have. Yeah, she 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 is she incredible. She is incredible. Every time Whatever we see does. her, <laughs> uh, it's incredible to see what uh, Phoebe San Francisco treat. She, what she, what all she's yeah. done in the yeah. short period of time. She's very athletic, very talented. Skylar Slice is absolutely amazing to watch in the ring she as well. Too. Big shout out yeah. to her. She won the Total Action Zone Wrestling Women's yeah, I heard about Championship that last night. Yeah. I heard about that. She's Actually, racking on the titles, man. F- funny story. As soon as I got home from Oklahoma City, the uh, Friday night, I got a call from uh, Dan Adams, who runs TAZ. I was like, hey, can you make it to me tomorrow? Oh, I was man. like, oh, <laughs> I, can't, I wouldn't be able to get off work in time. But, uh, but We're actually going to be checking out TAZ here. Definitely, definitely. Probably here pretty oh, soon. Yeah. Busy, busy month Christmas. Absolutely. So oh. the product uh, the product alone in R- RWE, you mm-hmm. were there when they started that, correct? Yes, yes. How's that? Um, 
basically it's just a bunch of a group of uh, younger guys, you know, that have gotten ex- that have gotten experience in some of the other promotions as well too. And we've just, you know, we've come together, and uh, you know, some promotions that have the different styles that clash. We we have the style yeah, yeah. like where we we try to be more fast pace. You know, we try to try to branch out besides the other promotions. Whereas uh, you know, there's a um, much more high flying, much more hard hitting style out there as well too. So. And uh, that, that's what I like about that, because I, I knew most of these guys that were starting out doing all that too. So I knew uh, t- we could put it together a good show because we know each other so well yeah. already. Yeah. And it just it just uh, escalated from there. And then we got the attention of you know XWE, we got the attention of uh, TAZ and WWX, and we spark- basically at one point all of these promotions were working together yeah. and we were using all the talent around the area and it was it was really cool because you had guys from this place and this place and this place and then you had guys that were going against each other from different places so it was kind of cool in that aspect that uh, you could have uh, you know I wonder who's better between this promotion this promotion this guy yeah. versus this guy it was cool seeing that at kind of head to head kind of deal you know not saying there's like you know contracts or anything where you have to stay to certain yeah. places but still you you know you can tell whose home promotion is yeah. whose by by how how often they usually work there so and that, that's how yeah. it should be is you should have a good working relationship Absolutely, between all yeah. promotions yeah, you know what oklahoma compound sends guys to mid-south mm-hmm. mid-south sends guys to compound they have a really good working relationship exactly it really works pretty good across the state yeah mm-hmm. they i mean overall it's it's a real you know, you look at guys that wrestle all over the state. Drake Gallows, yeah. Double D, The Girls, <laughs> yes. Nikki Knight, Erica, Scholar Slice. I mean, any in which town they go to, they have a good working relationship with Absolutely. whoever they work for. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's what I what I hope to hope to achieve too. When I first came down to Oklahoma too, like I I've really gotten cl- closer with uh, with Drake Gallows and uh, Mike Steerwell too. And they've and I'm glad because they they could have had me down one time and never had me back oh, too. Yeah, it, yeah. It's always awesome, you know, getting a chance to you know come back and then you meet some of the fans that are there too. It's like, hey, I remember you from yep. last time, and you know, seeing the, the the best part of seeing some of the kids out there too. There were some you know, people from this out that yeah. recognized you. Ex- well, yeah, so. exactly. That, that's all. That's always cool. When, I you remember know. that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does a lot of flips and. Stuff. Yeah, he nearly nearly broke his leg over the guardrail last time so he was here. <laughs> what is life outside of wrestling for Christian Temple? Um, well, as I've uh, kind of basically relaxed into a full time job now, yep. I've, I'm a used car salesman over in Wichita, uh, Kansas, for a Don- yeah. Donovan Donovan Auto and Truck Center. Which actually, <laughs> luck, luckily, uh, my boss is very easygoing with uh, whenever I get a chance to go take a booking. All I do is just give him a week in advance and be like, "Hey, man, I'm." I'm I know it's on a weekend or something like that too, but I've got a great opportunity, you know, down in yeah. Oklahoma City and all that too. And he's he's pretty lenient. He knows that this is this is my dream is being yeah. a professional wrestler too. And you know, he understands that the the car business is the good is a good way to receive steady yeah. income and all that too. And and he understands it too because he's a, he's a uh, he's a world or not a world known triathlete, but he's a he's a state known triathlete as well too. So he he takes days off sometimes too, Travels. and he'll go and travel and do those events too. So he understands it. You know, he he may not understand wrestling itself, but he understands but he likes to you know, work out. I don't, exactly. I don't like to work out. understand. I understand. Let's get down to some wrestling business. Yes, sir. Um, cliche question, man. What uh, yeah. what would be your dream match? Oh uh, man, bo- uh, both you know, on the independent level and on the pro level. Oh man, well I I know I hate saying I, that. But I, I yeah I completely understand. Yeah, I'm, when I first started watching wrestling, it was when I was four years old, and my, yes, my dad was a big time wrestling fan ever since he was a kid and all that too. You know he was he was watching in the days of the Von Erichs and the Funks yes. and uh, the Ric Flairs and all that too. He'd tell me like all these guys like some of the wrestlers like uh, Goldust. He, he, he told me that uh, Dusty Rhodes was Goldust's father, and I didn't know that as a kid. I was yeah. like, oh, really? Well, the was like, he, would, he would tell me all these things. I was like, that's so cool and all that, too. It's so, amazing as you grow up. Yeah. Like, all these people were related. What exactly, in the world? <laughs> right? Yeah. So I remember I'm, the earliest mem- one of the earliest memories I, I have is watching uh, – is watching Kane and Mankind versus The Undertaker and Big Show when they were uh, feuding for the tag team titles back in 1998. Oh, yeah. I was four years old. That was one of the oldest memories I ever I ever have. Is watch, sitting there with my dad watching that match, and for some reason, Kane really really stuck out to me. I just he was just that larger than life personality. You know, he was a monster. He was someone you get behind. He was a you know. For lack of a better term, he was he was a badass back then. Basically, oh, yeah. you know, when you saw Kane coming to the ring. You knew stuff was going to go down. You know, I had a nightmare in grade <laughs> school that I wrestled Kane, <laughs> and he threw me off the cage. And oh no! I actually <laughs> fell off my bunk bed during the night. Oh man! I was like, 
God, that's why it felt so real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good God Almighty, my they killed him. <laughs> but uh, but honestly, yeah, my 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 dream, my true dream match, like from Dota V, I would have loved to step in the ring with Kane, honestly, because th- that was the guy I grew up idolizing. Yeah. He was my favorite guy from from day one. He was good guy, bad guy, no matter what, he was my guy. Were you a fan of Isaac Yankum? Isaac Yankum. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't even know if I was even alive by the, when he was doing that, honestly. So <laughs> damn it, I'm old. <laughs> have you ever seen him talk about politics? I have. Oh man, he's like super libertarian yeah, and all that like, too, and he runs an insurance company and all that too, and he's just like, like this what? Guy's yeah. Fucking smart. He is. He, Dude, a lot of them guys are. Yeah. Him and him and Chris Chris Jericho, a bunch, a bunch of smart guys out there. JBL, yeah, JBL, Rhino yeah. ran for state senate. That's what I heard. I know. <laughs> did he end up winning or? I no, he I, lost. He, he lost. Okay. He won for the I think his party, but he lost. Well, he won the nomination. Won the yeah, nomination. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Uh, okay. Then he was dumbsies. Yep. So, so going back to what you were asking about dream match, uh, for as far as like the WWE is concerned, I would have loved to have got the chance to step in the ring with Kane. I don't see that, you know, happening in the near future because I'm sure he's probably <laughs> winding down at this point. I mean, it's crazy how long of a career he's had, you know, because of course he's, he's had the days when he was too. Unabom, you know, back in the early '90s. I think he started yeah. in the late '80s or something, yeah. if I remember right. He's going on close to probably but, uh, what thirty. 30 years? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be Possibly. surprised, honestly. He, he's been doing it forever and a half. So, but uh, as far as, you know, on, on an in, independent level, um, of course, then again, you got to think there's a lot of guys, you know, that yeah. you, you you knew from the indies that are, you know, they, they're going to TNA. They go into WWE now. They're And, you know, the Ring of Honor guys, they're slowly starting to move up. Right, yeah. But then you've got these newer guys that are coming in and making Ring of Honor still very special and all that, too. And even New Japan Pro Wrestling. I've become a big, big fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling, especially over the past few years, because I just love their hard-hitting style, um, the strong style, yeah. and as they call it as well, too. I've become a huge admirer of uh, Kazuchika Okada recently, because yeah. uh, the way he's uh, turned his career around from, from, you know, he was basically a jobber down in TNA, and now he's their top guy. He is their, he is the guy it's up amazing in New Japan Pro like Wrestling. Yeah, see people go elsewhere, and you're like, you know they had it. Mm-hmm. But they but weren't they being just, used properly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's a shame. But, you know, it's not always their fault. It's not always the the, the promoter's fault. I think you, know? you have to yeah. look at it like a Cody Rhodes situation. Mm-hmm. He leaves the WWE, you know, mid, not even a mid-card guy in WWE at that point. Right. He's gone to – the guy had a list when he left the WWE of the, the people that he wanted <laughs> I, to rest. I saw that list. Yeah. In the promotions and <laughs> one you go to, and yeah. he's almost crossed off everything. Exactly, it's, it's incredible some yeah. of the stuff he's done since yeah. he's left the company. You don't realize how good of a wrestler he is till you see some of his indie matches. Agreed, exactly. And much like we were talking, our buddy Aaron Helms about Ryback a while back. Yeah, about how they just don't get a chance. Nope to do what they're capable of because that's not what they're told to do on TV. There's, and the, like I said, there's just so many styles. There's there's more than just styles of wrestling. There's styles of television production as well, too. Yeah. You know, I listen to I listen to a lot of uh, Jim Cornette uh, shoot interviews, too. Jim and, he's, and, he, and he talks about how when he went to Ring of Honor, he was trying to introduce, you know, people that aren't, you know, familiar with Ring of Honor to a more TV-friendly, you know, environment yeah. and all that, too. And then, of course, the Internet fans, they get all pissed off because it's like, well, you're not pushing this guy. You're not pushing this guy. Yeah. The thing about it is, is though, you have to appease the market that you're aiming for. So, and they they were aiming for a bigger TV market. And I will always yeah. love a live show because you just don't get what you're gonna get uh, like a TV show. I, I it's can much agree with more that. Personal. I can agree with that. Yeah. Well, you pay I mean, hundred bucks to go on yeah. Night Raw. <laughs> you're gonna sit there waiting for the commercials to end. Mm. And then, like, like this is boring. You come to an independent show, or even a, a WWE live show. No, no television. Mm-hmm. You get wrestling. Yeah, and that's what people want. Absolutely, yeah. They want wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, not so much the production. I'm yep. not so big on that. <laughs> But that's, that's nice. Like, that's just the way it is. That's really, really, really the whistles, biggest biggest way to get your name out is is, is is TV and WWE. They they are the, they're the king of the television market right now. There's king of the world, yeah, man. King of the world. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like I said, I've been I've definitely been following a bunch of New Japan Pro Wrestling. I've been a big I've been a following uh, Kenny Omega now too. He's impressed me. Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of uh, Tetsuya Naito. I've I've followed his work closely recently as well too. You know, and uh, I I like the fact that uh, Wrestle Kingdom is always uh, on my birthday every year. So. So it's, it's a nice present. It's always, present. It's always, it's always a nice birthday present, present. Seeing, some, uh, seeing an awesome <laughs> wrestling show. They, like they, the I, I can't remember the last time I've seen a New Japan event that disappointed me, honestly, because wow. they, they're just so good at what they do. They have a really good working relationship with the ROH, and I really like mm. that. Mm-hmm. So we got another question we ask everybody that comes on this podcast. 
It's called foreign object. <laughs> what would you use as a foreign object? And it cannot be your conventional weapon. Mm-hmm. Steel chair, sledgehammer, trash can. Absolutely, yeah. It's got to be something. God. Tim said he'd use a spork. Jerry Maybe. Bossick said he'd use a 13-inch floppy wiener. <laughs> Our buddy Psycho Mike said he'd use a pink axe. Ah, okay. Pink axe. Well, what did Drake Gallo say he would use? I don't remember. Yeah. If, you, if you want to talk a foreign object, I'm going to say 2016 GMC Yukon Denali. Six point two V. I need a car. Fully loaded, (laughs) heated and cooled seats, navigation system. So if I'm going to run over someone, I'll run over him in style. So I need to sold a car on the podcast. I'm doing my job, Sean. I love you. I'm making you proud. The monkey mobile. (laughs) The monkey mobile. (laughs) Well, we need we need a new car for as much as we travel. No. Donovan Auto and Truck Center, fifty eight hundred West Kellogg, Wichita. Check it out. I, I don't swing by on the way back pay, home. Do I have to pay for that plug now? or <laughs> Yeah, I just bought me some more Buffalo Wild Wings. It's pretty full right now. Fair enough. <laughs> so. so you love to get out, wrestle everywhere you can? Absolutely. Where yeah, have you like, been statewide? Uh, statewide, like, like I said, I have my, actually I had my first uh, couple matches uh, down down in Arkansas. Okay. Um, I, I had a few matches, of course, here, here in Kansas. Um, I've been up to uh, Nebraska a couple times, up for uh, Brian, Brian Blade's promotion, MWA. Okay. Um, most recently, went went up to uh, to Iowa for Levi McDaniel uh, American Air Heritage Wrestling, I believe, which uh, was a, was quite quite the experience because uh, it was uh, it took place in a uh, ten foot by ten foot uh, oh ring that uh, the someone Is actually it like a took, ring? took a pic- <laughs> someone took a picture of the ring and it's like become infamous within the the, I- the internet wrestling community now because uh, I, I remember ring. seeing on on uh, Twitter one time. Uh, Cliff Compton Domino of uh, yeah. WWE guy. He was, I guess, uh, he was saying a friend of his that was currently employed in WWE didn't say the name, saying he wanted to leave WWE and go back to the independents. And he took a pi- he took the picture from that same show I was on with that ring and said, "This is what you're looking forward to." <laughs> so yes. it was just it's interesting. I was a part of that show where that ring has become a thing of legend now, yeah. or in, I guess a le- thing of infamy now, honestly. So, uh, but honestly, I I'm, I can't say I was upset with the experience because I, I I worked a gentleman named uh, Chainsaw King, Stephen M. King, and he he gave me a lot of great advice and all that too, which I'm I'm, I'm grateful for as well too. There's a lot so, of people, man. Yeah. We just keep your ears open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You do pretty good. Seems like it's easy. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty easy to find work, but when you start looking good, yeah. it's oh, yeah. even better. Exactly. Yep. So yeah, I mean, I'm excited for 2017. You know, I've got things still going on in Kansas, and I've uh, been in contact with uh, the Booker of a uh, Knucklehead Championship Wrestling down in Texas, which is uh, okay. a state I've been wanting to to head towards as well too. And I've been uh, I've been keeping uh, in contact with a guy I I used to train with, uh, Damian Smith. He's out in California. He actually went to Brian Kendrick's school oh, out there. Yeah, so yeah. I've been talking to him, and I've been wanting to. Set up maybe set up a weekend sometime where I can just head out there and go check out Brian's school and I guess there's there's a couple other schools out in his area too. I'd love to we go out warriors. and check out too. Exactly. We exactly. And we can jump in that yeah. Denali and head to Texas. There you yeah. go. Heck yeah, <laughs> brother. We appreciate having you on. You've been Not a guy a we've been trying to get on here and track down for a couple Not of months. I'd, I'd I'd love oh, yeah. to come back anytime. I I appreciate everything for you guys. Oh, I know man. I'm shaking your hand right now and hey. everyone can't People see that, can't but see they can hear it. it. <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't know it happened too. It's always good to see it mid south. X T X W E can't talk. Yeah. Technically making, technically making making a return to XWE, but still, that's a yeah. story for another day, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> you should have to have him back on for that, yeah, right? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, but yeah, it, it's awesome being, being on here as well, too. It's my first mm-hmm. actual uh, podcast interview or whatever, too. So that's it. It's a lot of fun. I'd We're a little fancy. Yeah. Not, not, too not too fancy. Not too much. <laughs> Well, so we got, brother, it was a pleasure talking to you. Awesome, yeah. It was it was and, awesome uh, talking with you guys. We got too, a buddy so, of yep. yours fixing to come on next. Yep, that's uh, that's, that's what that's what I buddies. that's what I hear. So, uh, I guess I will uh, I will step away now. And we'll uh, see you in the ring. Away. Yes, sir. See you guys tonight. Yep. <laughs> well, folks, we got a couple of shows coming up. We got IWR down in. I don't know where it's at. December it's an 11th. more Toys for Tots. Toys for Tots. Tots Foods. You got Mickey James. Man, that card is stacked. You got Chris Cameron, Jerry Bostic, ladder match. Bring out a toy for a good cause. You got Mid South Wrestling Alliance, December sixteenth. Rebel will be out there. TNA knockout. Uh, same type of deal, man. Bring a toy out for a good cause. Uh, it's gonna be a good time. I believe Santa is gonna be out there on the sixteenth. I'm kind of excited for that. Like, I like Santa. Dude, Santa's awesome. We are now joined by. Pretty much the face that runs RWE, well, the face that 
definitely runs RWE. Yeah. <laughs> we got Merritt McMichaels and Chris Vell. What's up, boys? How's it going? Oh, it's going. It's going. going. It's going. Yeah. Getting all fancied up, ready? Always. Always. I dress like this every day. <laughs> Not really. I, I've never dressed like that in my life. <laughs> Probably because I can't afford it. <laughs> I like to wear shorts because I'm fat. If I'm not in scrubs, I'm in gym shorts. Yeah. Well, but, uh, Chris, you've been how long have you been in the business, brother? I got my first contract when I was 18, so that'll be five years. Five years. Woo. Where was that? Where was that at? That was uh, MWE in Wichita. Wichita. Okay. Okay. Now you, you're what? Five years in the business. Yeah. Five years. Who was uh, who was your first match against? It was Ian, uh, a guy named Ian Quinn, who uh, who trained with me at the MWE school. Okay. It was okay. a, like, I think we worked out a 30-second spot for, like, two months. <laughs> and then my trainer came in and squashed both of us. So that was my first match. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was just happy to be there. What made you kind of want to get into all this and just be like, this oh, is man. what I want to do? You know how it goes, man. I was a fan <laughs> out kid. And then... You know, I'm looking at schools. It was when uh, I saw like, KCW come through Kansas or whatever, and then it shut down, and I was looking to go to, like, you know, I think I looked at WWA4 down in uh, Georgia, where uh, AJ Styles came from. Okay. Hey. And then, yeah, I got, like, it was actually through Nate here at yeah, XWE. Like, uh, Brian Nobbs came through, uh, I think, Salina with Lance. And uh, I can't remember how it went. It was, like, Nathan was married. And his wife didn't want him to go to the practice. And I knew Nathan. He's like, there's an open spot. I'm like, do you want to go? Because I was going to go, but I couldn't afford it at the time. And he just kind of gave me a spot. And I went and I got I got picked. And there you go. Oh, there you Sweet. go. What, uh, what would be your dream match if you could wrestle anyone, past or present? Oh, man. It would be the one thing that's just like, I got to get in the, the ring. The, the, the kid in me wants to say Shawn Michaels or, like, Jeff Hardy, I think, as the two guys I'd love to do. That'd be pretty good. I'd love to see you work heel against Cody Rhodes. Oh, I'm working oh, Cody Rhodes. Perfect. Right. <laughs> perfect. Dashing yeah, Cody Rhodes. Dashing, sure, yeah, That's... I've been a long time, long time fan. Now RWE, Merrick, you guys have been around for roughly about two years now. Two yeah. three years. Okay. What well, I mean, if you guys want to shoot, I'll give you a shoot. Uh, <laughs> I'm cool with that. That's so, what we do. So I listened to your guys' interview with Nathan. And Nathan kind of gave you the broad strokes <laughs> on XWE. It didn't really touch that I was with them in the backyard. Might not have known that. You know, it's, no, it's you funny. Didn't? I actually do know that. Okay, yeah, we watched some. We uh, watched some videos. I watched a video. They had a. It was Icon then. Uh huh. He had a match against Too Short, <laughs> and I think you came out with Too Short. Yeah. It was one where some lady <laughs> yeah. was sitting in a recliner yes. in someone's backyard. <laughs> Oh my they god. Like yes. VIP that was, was for, all That was for uh, that was for that was NXW as a backyard organization okay. in Kansas City. And we went up there and we did a thing for them and they when we got done they acted like it was the greatest thing they'd ever seen. Because none of them had any training at all. And they were they had they had a ring and we were like, Oh sweet. So we went up there and they were like you guys are great, man. They were, they were so stoked. And then we were like, we went there, saw they had two ropes around the ring, recliners, and we were like, we're going to get tetanus wrestling in this ring. <laughs> so we did the one thing, and we never went back. Um, <laughs> yeah, I saw that on YouTube. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. I just want to throw that out there. VIP recliners. That's a hell of yeah. a good idea. Right. Yeah, it was, was, I was a little jealous. Yeah, so. I mean, you could, you could sell that. I mean, that's what I watch my pay-per-views in. Right. So, but uh, but Nathan, myself, uh, and Nathan and a couple other guys, we were in the backyard together, and I helped them write the shows. Yeah. And for some reason, Nathan and a couple other one of them had decided that they were going to be done wrestling. They wanted to be done. Um, and this is me shooting from the hip now. Um, they decided they wanted to be done, and they wrote one last show. Um, and I disagreed creatively with what they were doing. They loved what they were doing, and so we had a conflict of interest, and I said, I, I implore you not to do it this way. I don't like it, and they wanted to do it their own way. And so myself and the rest of the guys that were going to stay and continue on in the backyard after this decided, well, we're going to do it our way anyways. And so we did what is being referred to as the Salina screw job, 
<laughs> and we changed the finish of the match and ran off with the championship belt. That's perfect. And out of the ashes of that, RWE was born, and XWE said, well, screw those guys. We're going to do bigger and better than them. And they did. <laughs> and so that was actually two years to the date of the last show you guys were at, Haunted Havoc. Uh. Yeah. And Nathan and I had mended you know, everything, and we came back together, and we were like, isn't it fitting that we're going to hug in the middle of the ring two years, two years yeah. to the day that we had our huge falling out? And interesting enough, the current RWE championship is that belt. That oh, was the yeah. XWE heavyweight championship. Yeah. Wow. So It's perfect. Like, just the whole, I don't know, it's the way that we were talking the other day, and I know Chris and Christian are in the middle of the Best for Seven, Best of Seven series. Yes. And you, we had talked through text the other day about how you came up with that idea, the reference that you got it from. Yes. And I went back and watched y'all's matches, and I was just blown away. Yeah. It's just something like we've been, we've been based out of Oklahoma all our lives. Uh-huh. We've done some stuff out of state. You don't see stuff like that. You don't see that kind of creativity. You don't right. see no, with, it's, it's a different stipulation every match. Mm-hmm. You don't see that. Right. I mean, you you might have a you know best three series what whatever not, but to go to different cities because the way you said it was y'all do it in a different promotion every match. Right. It's been um, this will be the. Four, yes, the fifth match in the series and the fourth promotion it's been to. Um, it, we started uh, in World Wrestling Express. Uh, that first match was in Great Bend. Then uh, the following, they had a, a show the very next weekend um, in Russell, Kansas, and that was the second match in the series. And then RWE, we had a show in Newton. It was the third match, and this will be... Uh, and then we had uh, Taz Wrestling yeah, yeah. in Hoisington. They did the fourth match. Um, and uh, coming up will be the fifth here in XWE. So. Okay. I love it, man, the creativity of it. Well, we took the, I took the inspiration from, uh, and not a lot of people know about it because it wasn't heavily publicized, yeah. but um, I think it's one of the greatest feuds in wrestling in the past 25 years was Colt Cabana and Adam Pierce for the NWA heavyweight title. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The seven levels of hell. Uh, or hell, hate, that's what it was, the seven, seven levels of hate. hate. And they did a different stipulation in a different city uh, for seven matches, and they feuded over the NWA heavyweight title, and this was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And I said, why, are, why is no one else doing this? Like, why? <laughs> and so, you know, we came up with our own promotion, and I said, we're doing this. Like, I it want just, to do this. It just helps build that relationship. Yes, between... yeah. And, and everyone's eating it up everywhere we go. They love it. It's good stuff, though, man. Uh, so speaking like independently, uh, I watched a couple of y'all's matches. Awesome stuff. Like, do you watch the national product on yes, TV? I do. Yeah. Do you I, keep track like I regularly. Uh, um, I, I the companies I watch, I obviously watch WWE. Yeah. Um, I find I find myself fast forwarding through Raw. That's but, I say this every podcast, man. I cannot sit through a whole Raw. Right. The whole, I love the three hours is a, is a challenge. Yeah, Raw, yeah. three hours is too much. Yeah. Like, well, you, stuff you know, do. I see why they did it, though. I mean, WWE's a business. They're making money hand over fist with three-hour program on ad revenue. Because whether or not you uh, yeah, like it or not, yeah. you're still tuning in. Yeah. They're still getting paid by those ad yeah. companies. Vince McMahon's a smart it. man. He knows what he's doing. You hate boycott. it. Boycott. You hate it, but, but you, you still can boycott it all you want. He's not going to lose any damn money. Yeah, right. he's not. So. I mean, you don't have to cancel the WWE Network because you know you want it. Right. So, well, I got a Fire Stick now, so I get it for free. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love I, I love SmackDown. I love to watch SmackDown. I think they're yeah. putting on an excellent product. Right I can now. watch a whole SmackDown. Yeah, it's entertaining, and it's yeah. I love it. It feels it's vastly different from watching. It, it feels different. It feels like a different company. Yeah. And I love to watch Lucha Underground. That is my favorite. Yeah, Lucha is awesome. Uh, Lucha <laughs> Underground is amazing. They just started doing live events. I really want to go to one. Yes, I noticed it. Yeah, yeah they started doing house shows, and it's genius. I figure they'd get up in this area, maybe Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, somewhere in that area. Yeah. I would say Pretty happy for that. Texas and Oklahoma would be probably, I mean, I think their market would be huge in Texas yeah. and Oklahoma. Maybe not so much in Kansas. Yeah. So. I know that they've, uh, I think they just got renewed for another season. Yeah. Oh. They're fixed to start air in Germany, too. Well, I know, it's, crazy. I know it's the El Rey Network. 
property. It's their baby. They yeah. made it from the ground up. It wasn't a promotion. They were like, we're just going to write a wrestling show like we would a television show. It's so that's different. Phenomenal. Man. Yeah, the storytelling. It's, 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 it's so different from anything you've it's ever seen. It's a telenovela. Yeah, it's great. What made you want to be a manager? Like, get in this and... <laughs> I know, you obviously, with your past, you know, with yeah. with some of these guys and stuff. Well, I actually got started in the entertainment industry as a magician. Wow. Um, which is... <laughs> which is... Uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, I knew I always wanted to be involved in television of some kind. Yeah. Uh, I always wanted to be involved in wrestling. and so, um, But I was always interested in magic, too. So I decided to pursue magic. While I was going to college, I went to Full Sail University for a creative writing for entertainment because I wanted to write for a yeah. television show. Cool. Um, and so I put myself through college um, doing magic. Yeah. Um, and... I always liked being cheered as a magician, but I was like, I want to be a bad guy wrestler so bad. Like, I've always loved the bad guys, and I was like, this is cool and everything, but my heart's just not really in it. And so um, I got a little bit of training uh, through, and shout out to uh, Renegade Pro Wrestling in Metropolis, Illinois. A little bit of training uh, from Danny Ice and Rough Cut Rick Ruby on how to be a ring announcer. And I said, teach me how to take bumps. And he learned how to take bumps. I did that for two months and said, screw that. I don't want to be a wrestler. (laughs) (laughs) I said, I can't take it. So they were like, but you've got a gift of gab. And so they convinced me to try and be a manager. And so I did that for a little while up there and then moved to Salina. And that's when I hooked up with XW. Because there was no indie promotions that I knew about in the area. There just weren't any running. And these guys were doing this in the backyard. And I was like... Man, they got a stage. They've got sound. This is whole vastly set, yeah. different from any backyard wrestling I've ever seen. And I was like, so I, you know, figured out how to get in touch with them. I said, I want in, and they let me in. Sweet, just off and rolling from there. And since I parted ways with XWE, we've been all over the place. Yeah, all over the place uh, with WWX, Taz Wrestling, RWE. Yeah. Um, I think I man like all together. I manage. Everybody. 12 different people, 12 nice. different superstars right now. Skylar Slice, you guys know. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Whenever she comes up this way, I, I manage her. Manager. Yeah, mm. so she's the current RWE Women's Champion, by the way. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, there you go. So, she also won the Taz Women's title last night. night. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes, I was yeah. not able to make it to Taz last night. Yeah. I that, uh, Shane lost his heavyweight championship, and I was really sad. Oh. Is that true? I, I, don't, I didn't see the results. I think someone told me that Kyle, Kyle Hawk beat Shane. Oh. Wow. Like, that's Kyle Hawk weird. from uh, Arrow Club with Kyle. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, that, I love that. Team. It's a tag team. Yeah. It is a tag team. Yeah. yeah, but he's been coming up to Taz running singles. Uh, yeah. 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 Without. Um, he's been doing a uh, program with Gary. And Jerry. Yeah. yeah. But. Hmm. So yeah, we just kind of we kind of been going all over the place, just doing the drives. I never heard the story Bob about would say. how he became a manager. I really didn't know that. Oh, about Metropolis. Yeah. Uh, I, I had Renegade no idea. Pro. They don't run anymore. <laughs> um, but if the two guys. Danny Ice and Rick Ruby, they'll hear me plug them and they'll know. <laughs> I'll share it on my Facebook and they'll be like, thanks, man. So, there you go. Cody tried to wrestle. He ended up throwing up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm Took done a lot. Then I was like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Just want to become a commentator, you know. Yeah. So how did you two meet? Through XW. Yeah. yeah. I saw him and I'd, he looked like a, just a, a little unmolded ball of clay. <laughs> and I was like... And he, he wanted to come to RWE, and I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, you're British now. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, but I can't, I can't speak in a British accent. And I'm like, it's fine. Don't worry. I'll talk for you. <laughs> I said, you're, you're British now. We're going to call you the crown jewel of professional wrestling. And he's like, okay, man, I don't know. It might work. We'll see. I'll try it. For you, I'll try it. It got over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. We were talking, we were talking to Nate Cody yesterday. About how obviously it haunted havoc. No one knew what the hell was going on. Yeah, and we, you know, we had everything in front of us. We're like, hey, okay, this is it. Then all of a sudden, RWE pops up on that screen, mm-hmm. and you two walk out. It was almost surreal. It was, it was legit reaction. It was like legit reaction. Like you know, obviously we know what the hell's going on, but like that, I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> 
And, like, I told them, I was like, you know, you grow up, and obviously being around the business, you don't get as dramatic as what you did when you were a kid. Yeah. Uh-huh. I remember when Hulk Hogan turned on uh, the Hulk, you know, the whole Hulk nation and joined the NWO. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you felt like that that emotion when you guys came out, came out just because with the production and the way that whole deal unfolded, it felt like I was betrayed, betrayed <laughs> and, yeah. like, I was a kid again. Right. And, and I feel like we maybe would have not gotten that type of reaction had XWE not had the production that they had. Yeah. Yeah. Their production really put that over oh, the top. Man. And shout out to my video guy, Burgess Martin, at uh, Big City Sound. Uh, dude did a phenomenal job on that RWE video package. That oh, that was played. awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> so, so what is the future for RWE? Um. We are just going to run shows all around the area. We're not going to touch Salina because XWE obviously has that monopolized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're just we're going to keep running all around the area. Um, McPherson, Wichita, Hutchinson, areas like that. And um, we just, we just want to tell stories. We just want to tell stories. We don't quite put the production into it that XWE does, but uh, we focus a lot more on the in-ring product yeah. itself. Okay. I've watched some of y'all's videos, and y'all's wrestling is like the whole show. Because I've seen some matches outside of theirs, mm-hmm. it's great. Well, thank you. And yeah, I mean, you see, best. you see that, and it's just you don't always need the fancy stuff. Right. As long as the in ring product solid, and y'all's is. Yeah. So as long as you're telling that story in the ring, man. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we really focus on, because I mean, me having the story, the, the creative background and education, I want to tell a story from top to bottom. Yeah. Well, Christian Temple, I was talking to him Friday night, and he was telling me, he goes, you know, that guy, he's so creative with what he does. Uh-huh. He can tell. He's like, you know, basically, he can tell great storylines. Well. And thank you to him. I'll, I'll... <laughs> what a sweet guy. Remind me to pat he's him a, on the back later. He's a sweetheart. How <laughs> nice. Outside of the outside of the ring, yeah, we get along. He paid me five dollars to say. Oh, he paid you five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> he wants that belt really bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> butter, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing too. You know, we've been around and we've seen guys get in there, do a bunch of spots, and they're done. And it was just like, I don't. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, that was cool. Like, I don't understand. That's like a cool flip, did. bro. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. You see, what I like about Temple and Vale, and this, another reason I wanted to do this series was. They know each other like the back of each other's hands. And I find myself being at ringside, covering my mouth because I'm marking out. And I have to cover my mouth because I don't want the fans to see that I'm acting like a little fanboy. Because (laughs) sometimes they don't tell me what they're doing. And I don't know. Like, we did a show in Newton, and I had no idea what was going on. Five minutes into the match, Temple Blades. And he's bleeding like a – he's just bleeding everywhere. And I'm like, what the heck? You guys did not tell me you were doing this. Not to mention, and I hope the Kansas Athletic Commission is not listening to this podcast right now. I doubt they do. It's against, it's Many against, people don't. It's against the commission's bylaws to uh, juice in the state of Kansas. Really? Well, they didn't tell me that on purpose because they knew I would tell them no. <laughs> well, the Oklahoma – I can't talk. Athletic Commission's – Freaking Nazis! So yeah, I heard it was. I heard. I hear it's a lot worse down there. We, it's, we got uh, fairly good up here. You got to give your left nut to wrestle. That's what I hear. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta you gotta take a blood test even to be a manager. Yeah, from what I heard. That's really? why. Yeah, that's crazy. That's why I'm <laughs> yeah, but I, I think overall, like product back then, what it is now, like dude, they used to blade all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now it's like yeah. no, I don't. Well, and I, they did it in the right context. They did it from a point of storytelling. They didn't blade. Just oh, blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the feud had gotten to a boiling point where they were. It was an ODQ match. Phil See, wanted, that's what Phil I love. looked like he was going to kill him. I love when that stuff happens, and it's like it was for a reason. Yes. Like not just hey, let's go do a hardcore hardcore match and just bleed everywhere. Yeah, yeah it's let's the second blood. It's just that's, dumb. No, yeah. no. It, it, if done in the right context, it's perfect and it's a beautiful storytelling oh yeah and that's what that's what we try to do i think you guys will be thoroughly entertained with what these two guys put together tonight yeah so. uh, from what i've seen the prior matches i don't want it to end tonight i want to see the next two because <laughs> like you, you see, i mean people work well together but these two work extremely well together 
more. And there's people in the Oklahoma scene that we've seen that just work extremely well together. But see these two, same age pretty much, same strive in the business. You don't run into that anymore. You guys were trained together. Trained together, yeah. 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 Came up yeah. together. So That's awesome. It's been great. Yeah, turns I mean, into a rivalry when yeah. they're, they're still young. Oh, it's definitely a rivalry. Like, oh yeah, people, people in the ring, outside the ring, we're always trying to like one up each so, other. So one up each other. Do you guys ever get noticed when you go places? <laughs> like, have you since Haunted Havoc? Yeah. Have you since Haunted Havoc? Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I live in Salina. Vale lives. In, uh, yeah, I'm in Kingman. In Kingman. I'm, I'm ways away. Um, yeah, I get noticed a lot. Um, People are kind of like weird about it though. Like I can, like I'll be in the the line at like the <laughs> checkout line at Walmart, and I'll hear them whispering behind me. <laughs> there's like, that that's dick. The, that's, that's <laughs> that Mc, there's that McMichael's guy, and I'm like, I turn around and look, and they they look at me like they're not really sure if I'm actually an asshole or not. <laughs> and so I just like you know give them a nod and I'm like, hey, what's up, guys, and smile at them, and they're like, oh, hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> Oh we thought you were an asshole, but you're not. You're actually really cool. <laughs> Just playing asshole on TV. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm actually not really a jerk, but no, I'm not going to sign your shirt. Get away from me. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I get noticed, and I, I try to. I'm just nice to him. Yeah. But at a show, I'm always a dick. Cody said I'm he got noticed at Taco John's, and they up they upsize his drink for him. <laughs> Why doesn't like, that happen? Cody, the trophy. Here's a bigger drink. <laughs> Here's a large. <laughs> it's a trophy sized drink for you, sir. <laughs> That's crap. Where's my upsize drink? <laughs> you got to go to Taco John's I and just stand there all day. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you know who I am? No? Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> well, guys, take a small then. <laughs> it's, it's awesome to have you on. Oh, Love what's going on up here at XWE, RWE. Kansas seems like it's just blowing up. Yeah, Lots of huge. talent. Yeah. Compared seems to like years, yeah. people work really well together up here as well. Yes. Promotions yeah. do. It's, it's so. They're tight-knit groups, too, like... Uh, definitely, I implore you guys to get up there and check out Taz and Boys and Tim. Uh, we'll Dan, Adams, on it. Dan Adams is a f- phenomenal wrestling guy. He knows what he's doing. Um, so definitely check that out. It's one of the one of the three promotions in Kansas you really need to check out. Well, we definitely plan on working with you guys oh, yeah. further at RWE and checking out Taz and obviously XWE. Great, great man. Well, we're happy you guys had us on. Appreciate it. Yeah, All right. Definitely. We enjoyed it, folks. As always, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and YouTube, and we will see you next week.